Having a nooner with Von Hart on WWDB, Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. Well, I guess we're on. We are. I'm Don Lewis Barnhart. This is Lady Duda McLean, our producer. Yes, I am. I'm sorry. I got something in my mouth. He's he's being a gentleman because we both like our coffee before the show. Mm -hmm. And coffee breath is sometimes not attractive. And he always has Altoids because he's a gentleman. And But worse, last night I had myself a cocktail. And it was uh, a martini with uh, four olives jammed with... Uh, with the garlic. So you had salad. Yes. With your I looked at I it. I like that. And I lost weight. You had I a think. salad martini. Anyway, I've got all these things in my mouth. I'm kind of talking like a Because of the deal. garlic, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because it kind of lasts a while. Yeah. It's the gift that keeps giving. And yeah. I didn't want. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't want to uh, uh, come in smelling. You're like, so thoughtful. Well, it's about trying to be nice. I never was that nice. Maybe to the. I was just going to Previous wives. I, I'm sure that they did appreciate your thoughtfulness, all four of them. <laughs> well, we're not going there anymore. Anymore. No. No. Um, we got a lot of stuff today. We do. Um, I'm going to, uh, I got a flashback Friday that I'm going to be yakking about a little bit later on, uh, featuring uh, Bill Maher, who I directed way back in the day, uh, Ra Raquel Welch, when she was on Mork and Mindy, and Dick Dale. And the Deltones. We got a little something we're going to be talking to him about. Or not talking to him. The variety. The sheer variety. And? Yes. Well, yeah, that, that's kind of good. And you got yes. something too, don't you? Yeah, I, I got, a, got a little piece I want to talk about. Some things related to pests and then some things related to life in general. I didn't like the way you looked at me when you said pests. I didn't mean you. I mean, I'm doing everything I can. I did not mean you. I wore pants. Nobody can see, but I wore pants. He did. So, there you go. Okay. Ryan, how are you? Ryan Silva is with us, and uh, he's our crack engineer. He is. And production guy who does all the uh, commercials for shows and, and stuff I, like I that. And I must clarify, as I did the last time you said that, he is our crack engineer. He is not an engineer on crack. There you go. He is our crack engineer. And we got our goofy John Stiles. Our he's a creative guy. Well, I, I, well, yeah, but he creates goofily. But no, but and every, I like that. every week when we come in to do the program, <laughs> he has the studio enhanced in a different way, yes. whether it's with lights or it's with equipment or it's with furniture or it's with function. It's just, John, work in progress. And he Loving has the it. lights on. And he has the lights yeah, on. There you go. Yes. Uh, John Stiles is our executive producer. Been with us now since we started on this thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to continue on. WWDB Around the World Weather. In Amsterdam. Which uh, I know you love. I do. And you haven't been there, but when you go, not yet. You're going to be in for a big surprise. Uh, Amsterdam, since we are worldwide, WWDB, worldwide digital broadcasting, yes. Uh, we can talk about people. We can. Because they're coming here. And places. Yeah. And stuff. And Amsterdam is 67 today, kind of cool. And tomorrow, 71, uh, Jerusalem. Boy, they're having a time over there, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, 84 degrees, so it's warm. Baghdad is 114. Oh, uh, kind of feels like Vegas in the summertime. Well, last week it was pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty hot. Yeah. Like you. Like me. Rio de Janeiro, aside from the Zika uh, mosquito. Is that how you pronounce it? Zika? Zika, Zika. 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 Yes. You say Zika, <laughs> I'll say Zika. <laughs> <laughs> Zika, Zika. Zika. Oh, no. Let's <laughs> Hold go on to your off. waka. <laughs> no, we're not holding on to our wakas. Keep going. Oh, okay. Tokyo is uh, 63 degrees. Rio, by the way, a lot of uh, uh, sports people. I got these dog on things in my mouth to protect her from my garlic breath. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> a lot of people aren't going down to Rio. A lot of sports guys. Nope. Because of the mosquito uh, threat. No. Nope. And uh, they're young guys, you know, uh, good golfers usually are in their 20s, whatever. And yes. uh, they don't want to take the chance of getting bit by a mosquito because they are trying to have families. Right. And I guess if the person was, now correct me if I'm wrong, if a woman gets bit by a mosquito or stung or, right. you know, right. then I can understand the big threat there. 
But does it transfer from the male to the female? I don't know. And you know what? I wouldn't want to take the chance of being the first to find out. I wouldn't either. But I mean, I think they got that in mind. Right. So. Right. Anyway, coming back home today in Las Vegas, it's 105. That's nice. Yeah. That's it, nice weather. I know the I know the people that don't live here mm -hmm. or in the desert southwest area at all probably don't understand that 105 in July is not bad. It's almost near freezing. Yeah, I, I, got goosebumps. I, I actually have goosebumps. I'm actually well, if you taking, wore clothes. I'm taking advantage <laughs> of our sunshine. Well, if you wore some clothes, we probably could, you know, you wouldn't have that problem. Oh, my God. God. That turtleneck would look real good right now. Not about this it. time of year. <laughs> Hell no. Oh, okay. Boston, 74 degrees. And Charleston, South Carolina, it's going to be 100. Ew, and Denver, muggy. 91 degrees as they toke up. And uh, Colorado Springs, which is not too far from there. I believe my friend uh, Ron Solomon is a writer, mm -hmm. and we've had him on the air before. And Houston, 96. Los Angeles, 80. And enough of that. Enough of that. Six and a half minutes past the hour. Our phone lines are going to be open today. Yeah. We got them working. Uh, you know, a new station and a new uh, configuration of all that kind of stuff. Yes. Kind of put us a little bit far behind. <laughs> We're not in the mood to take calls the whole show. We got stuff to do. But if you'd like to call in and have an idea of what you want to talk about that makes some sense and it's not insanity, uh, please call. Uh, this is uh, 702. 685-8380. I'm also going to be yakking about the Yucca Mountain is starting to rear its ugly head. Oh, God. It's I, because it's an election year. It's Everybody's got to get all scared about Yucca Mountain because it's an election year. Well, i, I, I got a story here that's going to maybe uh, it, uh, tell you what's happening back in Washington. Uh-huh. And we'll get to that maybe a little bit later. So um, uh, on our Flashback Friday, I'm going to plug this. Coming up in the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be acting with uh, Robert uh, about Robert Blake yes. on Beretta. Yes. That he made a turning point in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't know it, but he did. But he did. Uh, he forced it. Uh, Ringo Starr's on the books. Uh, Sophia Loren, the time I saw her backstage, <laughs> she was, that was cute. They don't make them like that well, anymore. Well, well, no, but they had, she had two bodyguards backstage. Because us. they don't make them like that yeah. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you they were having a really nice time guarding that body. Yeah, and, and we're oh. going to be yakking with, uh, about Benson, which was my very first network television directing job. I loved that show. It was a great show, but Robert Guillaume was, was fabulous. Mm -hmm. All right, it's about eight minutes past. It's Hot Picks of the Week mm -hmm. on WWDB. That's it? That's all these... We paid him big monies and they just stopped? Oh, uh, well, who cares? Uh, you're up, kid. Short, sweet, and to the point. Okay, my hot <laughs> pick this week is I'm not quite sure what's bugging me more. There's a theme here. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's bugging me more. What's bugging me right now about the whole FBI deciding that there really wasn't anything sufficient to indict Hillary Clinton when, in my opinion, and the opinion of many legal scholars there was, that bugs me. I don't know that she's necessarily completely off the hook. We kind of talked about that a little bit before program, and I would invite you to share your view on that, but it still bugs me. It bugs me because there's no accountability, apparently, at this point in time, and it bugs me. But I'm not sure if that bugs me as much as the bugs that are bugging my house right now. What? Every year around this time, I don't know if it's a change in the weather, the ground temperature, ants invade my home. Yikes. invade my home. My son woke me up at one o'clock in the morning a couple of nights ago just slamming things in his bathroom because they were everywhere. I thought he had maybe a date coming home. No? no. He was be. He, he, oh, I almost no. said something very wrong. No. <laughs> he had ants in his pants Not uh -oh. and it was anyway it was those kinds of ants. Okay. So that and now I found him in my dining room last night and then they were in the downstairs but I hate these things and because I'm sensitive to being exposed to pesticides as I recover from my my um, cancer I have to find natural ways to eliminate these pests my first go-to is Windex 
Yeah. If you've ever seen my big fat Greek wedding, you know that the main character in there says that Windex is good for everything. I'm telling you it's good for killing ants. I'm not going to talk about the Michael Constantine story that okay. I have. Okay, you should though. We'll do some other time. Another time. Yeah. But so it's been Windex. So I, I know that we're going to kind of narrow down when we're going to be inviting you to call in today. But if you have a natural way to control these pests, and I'm not talking about Hillary Clinton right now, I'm talking about <laughs> the ants, please call us at 702-685-8380 because I would be interested in hearing from you and you can help me with my pest problem. Okay, I understand that vinegar, okay. and you mix that with some other ingredients, does the trick on almost anything. Okay. Now, I, I don't have the information here. I didn't plan on bringing something, but you may want to check that out. Okay. About, uh, about I think it's apple cider vinegar. Right. That can mix with uh, certain chemicals that are non-toxic that can eliminate a lot of pest things. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, get back to us. Are you done with your... Uh, I am now. Because <laughs> I'm writing this down because I don't want to forget. i got to Google this after the program. Our program, we don't call it a show in case you're wondering what the hell we're talking about. It's a program. Because shows, I don't dance. She doesn't dance on, on, on the program. And so uh, we don't call it a show. It's what it is. I chair dance. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later on when we have Dick Dale. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to cast my vote this coming up. And I don't do it early. Because people, to me, you go out and you vote a couple of weeks early. Mm -hmm. Things, especially in this election, could change dramatically. Yes. I mean, uh, Frump, whatever, and her... The other frump. Uh, well, I'm just saying. Between, frump and frumpier. <laughs> well, I'm, that just came boom out. I don't know how that works. That's good. Well, thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you don't know what's going to happen. And in two weeks prior to the election, anything could happen anything. with those two guys. Anything. So my, my thought is I'm going to put myself on a stopwatch. And I'm going to go to the place where you vote. Yes. And I'm going to have that radio on to the news station yes. to find out if anything has changed. To the second before you get on out of that the day, car. On the day of e election. There, my friends, uh, voting, not is election. a conscientious American. And then I'm going to walk in, and, and I'm going to sign in, right? Yeah. And I'm going to hit that stopwatch. And that will tell me what time it is that I voted, okay. how long it took. Okay. And then, if anything changes, I'll know when I come back out, oh, it took me... Uh, five minutes he's going to go in there five minutes before the polls close that's how close you're going to cut this i just don't want to be the guy that that decides to vote for trump or trumpet um or frump and frumpet okay. whatever i don't want to be the guy that uh, missed the boat when somebody says well somebody you know did something very wrong which there are already trying to do do you know what i wish though honestly mm -hmm. I wish that they wouldn't be giving the polls closing and the preliminary exit poll information and all that other stuff because some people will use that as their excuse to stay home. Mm -hmm. They do. Or to change their vote because they are led to believe by whatever media outlet they listen to that a certain candidate is ahead, which may not necessarily be true, and that person may change their vote based on that and instead of who they really wanted to vote for. And I just think that it can be very misleading and it can sway people unnecessarily. I think that you should go in with your own mind made up, not knowing who's ahead or who's not, and just go in and vote your conscience. Go in and make your choice. Did you see the picture of the Clintons in, on Facebook the other day? You did mention that to me earlier, and while I think about it, yes, I do. With her face going... Yes, I did, yes. And, 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 and Billy Boy is standing behind her... Mm -hmm. And you got Chelsea mm -hmm. looking at both of them. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the three shot. Right. In television terms, if I was cutting to that, right. you cut to the three shot. Right. But they were laughing like, we're getting away with it again. Now, picture this. If, she, if, if Hillary gets in and she becomes our next president, whether right. it's for four years or eight years, right. depending on the dumbos that are going to continue to go along with that path, okay? Right. Guess who's going to follow her? Chelsea. Oh, dear God. So Chelsea then, is, if she's going to be groomed, mm -hmm. will be coming up for the presidency after her mother. This is not a monarchy, people. Well, they God. think it is. And, and then she's got a child. Oh, oh God. That we'll, is, we'll be long gone before any oh, of that I happens, so. and that's a relief. Well, I, I, I hope That'll so. be a relief. I, I do you, you do me, boom, we're out of here. Don't say do me to a man <laughs> in your condition. <laughs> 
it's, well, I'm glad you picked up on that. I did. After all these shows, you're now doing the line that I, oh, um, so anyway, back to the voting and then I'll get off of it. Okay. It's a quarter past the hour. This is Don Lewis Barnhart on WWDB. Um, I still think voting now is we have two bowls of dog poop. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and what do you vote for? You know, who's the most evil? Who's the less? I mean, what, all Dr. those questions. Evil. Well, all, all, all those questions that people use. And anyway, um, if you look at the, and here's the problem I see. I, fine, you can third uh, third party, or you can try to get a third party, or you can try to get um, uh, you know write-ins and whatever. But nobody seems to understand that dog poop, no matter what bowl you're trying to vote for, right? It's all from the same dog. I know. Well, I know you do because we've know. talked about it. But there's people out there that don't give a hoot about what kind of poop they vote for. <laughs> they just want to wear the sticker that says, I voted! Yeah, and I, then they can walk, and then when you say, well, why did you vote for that person? And then they go, crickets chirping, crickets well, chirping. Well, crickets I chirping. voted for him, and I'm very because happy. Because it's historic. Yeah, I'm very ah. happy. I voted for that piece of dog poop over there. Yeah, but the <laughs> lobbyists, and, the, and, and they're all the same dog. I know. All right. Okay. WWDB! Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. Yep, and uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, uh, um, here's to your health. We are. Oh, wait. Here we go. Boom. Here we go. All right. All right. Cool. So I'm going to talk to you all, y'all, all y'all, surprising things that hurt your heart. How about a love affair? Yeah, that can do it. Women. If it goes bad, yeah, it can go. Man. <laughs> what did you say, John? I he said, said women. women. <laughs> Well, I'm sitting next to the brightest of the bunch. Thank you. Okay. But before they take I get my there, money and break my heart. Yeah, well, you know. Because one of the first things that can hurt your heart is dental problems, which brings me very quickly to my experience this week. I had a crown break Friday of last week. Your queen, your queen thing fell no, off? No, 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 no. So I have this thing break. My dentist office gets me in right away, and he says to me, you know, you need a new crown. And I went, well, yeah, I know, right? right okay i know that so anyway it was great from start to finish i know a lot of people are afraid of their dentists i happen to have one of the best in town his name is dr michael wanless and they took care of me from start to finish even referring me to a specialist within two days to have a root canal done that was painless so it was great but dental problems can hurt your heart they and can your hurt breath. your heart they can do all kinds of stuff all kinds of stuff you, so, if you get gum disease you're in big trouble here's what you need to do okay. floss you need to floss. Now? Okay, not right now. Oh. So brush and floss every day. People with gum disease are more likely to have heart disease mm -hmm. too. And the other thing that I will tell you is if you don't like the string, because ew, the best thing you can do is get a water flosser. They are the coolest things ever. They have a reservoir. They have an intensity knob. Don't say it. You can put water <laughs> <laughs> and mouthwash in. And they are more effective than string floss. And they're... They're really good. My third wife had long hair. Pump, pump. Okay. <laughs> so take care of your teeth so that your heart doesn't get hurt. Shift work. If you're a night worker, and this is very interesting, mm -hmm. people what? stop it that live here in Vegas, if you're a shift worker, that could hurt your heart too. Working at night or irregular hours raises your risk of a heart attack, according to a recent study. Your internal clock, your circadian rhythm. So if you're a shift worker. I used to, dri I used to drive your circadian. A little two-seater. I mean, it was a nice little car. What? You don't believe that for a minute, do you? No. Okay. Okay, so Busted. if you're a shift worker, balance that out by eating good and getting a lot of exercise. Snoring can harm your heart, especially when you got your wife kicking you all night long because you won't stop. Well, listen, when uh, Our Lady of St. Apnea comes visiting <laughs> what i was trying to be kind of spiritual about it but when, when our lady of saint apnea comes visiting i had the same problem and they said so i went to the uh, p uh, people that monitor your sleep right. habits I won't go back no because how do you how can they accurately measure how deep your sleep is when they got you wired up and you're in a strange place well i said the same thing and i said have somebody come and sleep with me and we'll figure out if i snore or not which explains why he's been married four times well there you go and they so, didn't do it anyway if you snore sorry. Sorry, you could be a victim of sleep apnea don't go to a sleep study though because it'll keep you up all night okay all right 
An unhappy marriage is harmful to your heart. No kidding. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Unrequited love and or stress in an unhappy marriage uh -huh. can hurt your heart. So fix it or get the hell out of it. Loneliness can hurt your heart. It can break your heart. Well, I'm lonely right now because I'm, so I'm hearing sorry. all these. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all these things that are going to crucify me when I get home tonight. No. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep through the evening. Yes, you will. Well, with Jack. Yeah. And, a little Jack oh, in hand. Jack, and, by the way, folks, is a dog. I'm and his favorite beverage. Yeah, well, so we and have, a great one-liner, but we won't say the line No, now. we will not. No, we'll we've save already that. Done that. We've Family already, show. Yeah, we've already done it. Family show. Yeah. Uh, belly fat, no bueno. Bad for your heart. Suck that in. <gasps> okay, so belly fat is hang not on, good. Hang on a second. Ooh. <laughs> Two less olives tonight, if you would. Um, too much tube time. <laughs> get off of your dairy air, and you got to move it, move it. You got to get up and move it. Don't sit there staring at the TV or the computer. Get up and move your ass. Shake that groove thing. Well, why, why are we sitting down? Why don't we stand up and do the show? I can, I can the program. Because we spent a lot of money on those chairs, and I want to see butts in them. <laughs> butts in seats. These chairs are awesome, you guys, because they swivel yeah. like that. See. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. Thank you, are Don. we? Are we? Uh, yeah. And too much exercise all at once. So if you're going to get into an, into an exercise program, uh -huh. do it slowly. Mm -hmm. Build yourself up. Build okay. up your stamina. Don't like. Hit the gym and do two hours of cardio the first day back after 10 years of not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So take care of your heart and it will take care of you. Well, so we have a little extra time. I, I have a kind of a big report here, but uh, I want you to give that report. No, well, I'll, I'll get to it. No, you're, you're, you have I'm interesting done, stuff. Okay. No, you do. I was done with the heart thing. But we didn't talk about your particular situation medically. Medically. Well, you know, we used to have a, on yeah. our earlier programs, we talked a lot about what you were going through, yeah. chemo, radiation, uh, drugs, and g the good stuff, doctors and stuff like that. Right. So I just wanted an update for anybody out there that may say, uh, how are you doing? What's going on with you? Here's the good news. Mm -hmm. um, I had my first of my follow-up tests done last Friday, and I'll be getting the results of that soon. Mm -hmm. I have the second of my follow-up tests coming up this Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the good news as well is when I went in and had my teeth cleaned yesterday, because while I was getting all this stuff taken care of, I got those taken care of too. They wanted to check because chemotherapy can be really hard on your teeth and on your bones. You, you, you want a, a little taste? Do I need one? No. Okay. So anyway, you guys, the good news is that I took really good care of my teeth because my dental hygienist, who's also my friend, gave me some advice that I followed to the letter the whole time I was in treatment and I have no damage, no bone loss, no nothing. So that's the good news. The bad news is my insurance company is pulling its BS again uh -oh. and the the test that's been requested for my post my first post treatment PET scan has been declined. So I'm now back at the in the trenches trying to get that turned around but physically I feel fantastic. Physically you physically. look good. Thank you very much. And uh, you get tanned. I, I, I'm fighting to get just a little bit of a blood. He's taking my advice and he's getting outside for a few minutes every day yeah, to get it, his vitamin D production generated naturally. Instead of a good, uh, uh, <laughs> the joke just went. Family show. No, Family no, no. Was it wasn't even that going okay. that direction. Okay. If I was sitting out there in the sun uh -huh. thinking I was going to get a good cab tan. I got a rosé. You did? Yeah. I mean, I, look, I, I went to the mirror. I went. That looks terrible. No, you don't look embarrassed or anything. No, you but look, look you look ruddy. Thank you. you. There you go. In a good way. He's looking rugged. Yeah, well, I'm I'm thankful uh, that somebody can actually pull that <laughs> off. Uh, I I uh, well you said last week on your health report yes. about getting your vitamin D. Yes. And I went outside and took my ten minutes. Yes. And I came in with a little blush. A little glow. He's got his glow on in a good way. Jack likes it? I'm sure he does. Having you outside, huh? With yeah. him. So he's not all alone. Are you done? Backyard. I am now. Huh? I am now. Okay. Okay. Um, on my uh, my uh, here's to your health report. Uh, it's Yucca Mountain. Those sea suckers. You know what that means. Yeah. You can figure that out. I Wasn't do. that a shirt? No, that's seersucker, and oh, that's a suit. A sea sucker is something else. It's family show, family show, family show. Well, kids, but don't, don't they wear that. those kind of figure shirts? Figure it out. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, those bastards back in Washington are trying to buy us off out here. Again. 
Yeah, and the, the, this, is, this comes from the Sun editorial page. Uh, the Sun uh, newspaper is integrated with the uh, RJ yes. here in our town. Yes. And uh, they're, what are they, right? They're kind of leaning more to the conservative side? The bulk of the Las Vegas Review Journal is center right and beyond, but the Las Vegas, the Sun, is more liberal and left leaning. Okay. Well, he, he, I'm going to read you a little something because I want you to be aware of it, and you can or you can call or send emails to whomever you think is uh, will help us out. Uh, some politicians in Congress are grasping at the fantasy of gaining control of Yucca Mountain, so their state's expendable nuclear uh, waste would come to our city, which is about 90 miles north of us. Uh, their strategy, which will be aired during a congressional hearing Thursday on Capitol Hill is to persuade Nevada politicians he sneered did you catch the sneer to uh, to allow the use of Yucca Mountain frail geology as a tomb for the most deadly material known to man this is in exchange for what they wrote here a bag of coins so the, the bastards here are going to hopefully fight for us, but the guys back in Washington, the sea suckers, are, are going to try to try to buy us out, <clears throat> try to buy us off. It goes on for a while. You can go back a couple of days, I think it is, and get this. Right. Uh, you know, and I have to say, and I'm not a big fan of Harry Reid at all, not one second. As a matter of fact, I've been accused of calling him names over the years that we've been on the radio. Uh, Jackass was one of them. However, Mr. Reed, mm -hmm. I have to give him a little credit for this, <clears throat> said that uh, that will never happen, that uh, the politicians will never be able to get uh, the nuclear waste into our uh, Yucca Mountain. Right. That's all I have to say about that one. I say thank you, Harry, you know, you old son of a bitch. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's 27 minutes past the hour. It is. Don Lewis Barnhart, Harry, is the guy that's uh, looking right at you. There you go. So, that's him. And if you if you go back on your word and take the bag of going, uh, coin, I screwed that up, didn't I? It's okay. If, if, huh? It's all right. Okay. Well, I guess it's uh, almost time for you know whom. It's and almost. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything that traffic will allow. When you're listening to Ethel Merman, you can't. You can't. Did you ever see her dance and act in movies? Yes. Back in the day, I love her. Oh, she's fabulous. Yes, she is. And I used to hate her voice. I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't. I didn't really, you know, kind of. But it suits her. Well, it does. It suits her. She couldn't have any other kind of a voice than that. And she was a serious actress and a mm -hmm. serious singer. Mm -hmm. However, she went into that mad, bad, mad, 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 mad world mo motion picture. Motion picture. And, <laughs> and was a hoot. She mm -hmm. was funny. Yeah. I like her. Oh, she was great. And I love it that you chose that as the intro to this segment for me because it's just awesome. Well, you are my Ethel Merman to me. Yeah. <laughs> You're more Merman than my Ethel. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. As I murmur along. So, <laughs> out of the wonderful resource that we have in mm -hmm. our Friday morning paper called The Neon, mm -hmm. here are the things of interest in our fair city this coming weekend Ooh. and into the week. If you're coming for a visit or you live here, these are some of the fun things you can go and do. If you need a laugh, we all need a laugh, because mm -hmm. things haven't been very funny lately around no. here. Not around here, but around the world. And Dallas last night was a no. downer. Yeah, that's just... Anyway, you got... Uh, anyway, Adam. if you want to laugh, Adam Carolla. I love Adam Carolla. He has sardonic humor. It's just <laughs> dry. It's dry and it's lovely, and he has a podcast that he does. He's going to be podcasting from the Treasure Island, and it is going to be, uh, why do I always do this? Friday. It's Friday. Sorry, guys. It's Friday at 9 o'clock, but here's the ticket prices. Here you got, If you guys have been following the show, <laughs> you're going to know that this drives me crazy. Here's the ticket prices. $46.33 to $65.35. Who does this? Uh, morons. Who does this? Morons. But he, I'm telling you. Yes, John. Does that include tax? I'm assuming that it does. Because maybe they set that price figuring the tax rate is this much, 
So it would come out to fifty it's bucks, including the tax. It's or just the tickets are forty-five plus tax makes it forty-six thirty. You are John. You are ruining the entire bit. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so Maybe Adam, we are. Well, I'll cut that out in post. Okay, <laughs> Adam Carolla <laughs> at the Treasure Island Theater, mm-hmm. nine o'clock tonight. Go get your tickets and laugh. We all need to laugh. The next thing, Ted Nugent. I'm from Detroit, you guys. Ted Nugent, Wango Tango. You got to go see him. He is at the Foundry this evening at seven thirty. Um, at the SLS Las Vegas, what? I know you're going to say something <laughs> me, about Wango me, Tango. What? Cat scratch fever, come on! No, way, baby. <laughs> no, not that. I don't care what he sings. It what? Matter. I love well, Ted Nugent. Well, I've never been a Ted Nugent fan. He gets a lot of heat. He a should. Of, I love him. He's bold. Well, a lot of people are not happy with Mr. Nugent. Oh, well. But, I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I don't it's care. It's America. America. I don't, I don't care what people think of me, and I'm sure he doesn't think... And care about what people think about him. Okay. Now, next up, uh-huh. an oldie but a goodie band. Uh-oh. I actually saw them live a couple of years ago with REO Speedwagon. It's Chicago. If you are a Chicago fan, mm-hmm. you got to go see them. So they are at the Pearl, at the Palms, on Saturday. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You have to go see them. But here's these hokey ticket prices again. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. $68.81. To $188.08. 8 o'clock tomorrow night. I think I've got $0.08. Cents. I do too. 188 I don't know, the $0.08. Cents. <laughs> I got it, I'm there. But please go see them because they're fabulous. The horn section, everything, they're just they're fabulous. And the other thing I have to say is only in Las Vegas, and I will close my segment with this. Debbie does Dallas the musical. <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you a question. When you have the choreography, <laughs> when, when you're doing the choreography and you say, dear, can I get you to go over there and sing don't and lay on that sing. bed over there for me a second? Can I get you to do that? <laughs> I don't think yeah. that was a whole <laughs> <my God. laughs> Don't talk with your mouth full. Yeah. <laughs> well, Whoa. Okay. I'm sorry, Ryan. No, no, what no, did no, you no. say? Too hot for TV. You guys. <laughs> okay. So only in Las Vegas. Debbie does Dallas the musical. Can I, can I expound on that for just a second? Yeah, make it quick because it's a family show. An X-rated romp spawns a tuneful R-rated spoof as Debbie Does Dallas the Musical invades the Onyx Theater. As in the 1978 original, the title character resorts to up-close and personal measures to finance her quest to join the Texas Cowgirl Cheer Squad. In this version, however, (laughs) musical numbers replace sex scenes, giving the show a body burlesque vibe. Debbie Does Dallas the Musical continues at 8 p.m. Thursday through Saturday and 5 p.m. on Sunday. On Sunday! So are you and uh, Harvey going to be in the through front July row? July 23rd at the Onyx and um, tickets are $23. So I just got to tell you and only... 69 cents. And 60... <laughs> okay. I'm done now. <laughs> and so are we. <laughs> I wouldn't push that too too hard. It's a family hard. show. It's a family show. You want, are you are on that envelope? Show. You were right to the edge, weren't you? All right, listen. Okay. I've got a couple of things. That this is the uh, entertainment section, is it not? It is. Oh, okay. Um, years ago, and we're talking way back. Okay. Uh, 1958 to 59 ish before I got into the radio business mm-hmm. as a disc jerky. Um, I was going to the Don Martin Radio School of Broadcasting. Okay. And it was right there on Hollywood Boulevard. And we ran in, and I was with a, a buddy of mine that we were rooming together, okay. trying to get through school. We were working as cue card pages at ABC. So we would go to school for four or five hours in the morning. Mm-hmm. We'd get in my, my, my Cadillac, I had a, a, a Fleetwood Cadillac, an old one. And it was a, you know, and a green, we called it the Green Hornet. Uh-huh. And so, and so we would bust our butts over to ABC, work on uh, Lawrence Welk and a number of other programs. Mm-hmm. And then we'd bust back, and then I was in charge of running this record store. Now, we were at class one day, and this guy named Steve walks in the door, and he mm-hmm. says, I would like to have a lot of people, guys, that I can support that would take care of the different uh, of, of venues, different things of mm-hmm. uh, the records, uh, d- uh, distribution, uh, buying. So we would go down to these record stores and buy, uh, buy uh, albums for a quarter, 
They didn't oh. have CDs in those days if you're young. They had old albums. We would buy them for a quarter, come back into my little store on Hollywood Boulevard and sell them for three ninety eight. I mean, that was that's what we did. And we had you were bong- an entrepreneur. Well, we had we had bongos and we had all kinds of stuff. We were busy from. He the- was a beatnik entrepreneur. Yeah, okay. a, little, a little bit of yeah. Anyway, um, so Steve said, uh, "I'll put you up in this house." So he got about fifteen people, and we all lived in a four bedroom place over on a off commune. of Yucca, somewhere in uh, Hollywood. You know where Yucca is? A beatnik yes, sir, I commune. Do. Yep. A- and we were like four or five to a bedroom. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And his mother Family came in from show. his mother came in from Sicily, and she couldn't speak a word of English, little teeny thing. And she she cooked, and she her only words were manjari, manjari, boy, manjari. You know, we would and she eat, would eat, and uh, and so anyway, so Steve would feed us another way by uh, we went down to Michelli's, I think the place was. Yep. It was off of uh, Las Palmas and Cherokee. Thank you, Las Palmas. I couldn't remember the name of the street. Right and behind Blessed Sacrament Church. There you go. And so one of 15 would walk in the door. Mm-hmm. This is a big place, I and mean, it was a very popular joint. We'd walk in, sit down, and wait. Pretty soon, here comes a big bowl of mon- uh, um, um, minestrone. Soup. Thank you, You're minestrone. Welcome. Thank you. Well, I've done gun probably and, and and you go uh, and you would have that with a roll. Okay. And you get up and leave. Next guy would come in, sit down. Here comes a bowl of menestrone soup with a roll, eat, split. And that's how he fed his people. And we all lived at this one house. And he gave me a credit card one time. And I'm going to get to the Dick Dale story in just a second. Okay. You, yeah. uh, he gave me a credit card. And on the credit card, it was a Texaco card. Okay. And it was five star er, meaning it was top of the line. And it was made out to a lady by the name of Sunny Day. Now, Sunny Day was a stripper. Oh, <laughs> I knew we were going someplace with this. It's a okay. family show. I'm family just, show, I sunny day. I didn't say hooker. I said stripper. Stripper. And so, so, and I used that credit card to fill up the Green Hornet car. Okay. That's how it got the us Cadillac. around. That's how it got us down to uh, uh, Pico, where we bought all these albums. Okay. Anyway, and on and on and on. And finally, one day, uh, Steve said to everybody, I'm going to open up a uh, recording studio. Mm-hmm. Over and I'm saying to John because John lived in Hollywood in those days. His mom had a diner that way back in the day, and uh, and he knows Yucca and Ivar. Yep. And he built Steve built a big recording studio. Okay. With the with a with a thing that if and Dick Dale came into the picture. Dick Dale's father said, "I will put all the recording equipment into the studio mm-hmm. if you record him uh, on his first record." Wow. But that's what we did. Who's and, your daddy? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. And so he, 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 uh, you know, we tried to record and all that kind of stuff. We put all this acoustical tile and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, and Steve went around to all the radio stations, KRLA, KHJ, all the, the rock and roll places uh, that played all those records and uh, nothing. Pretty soon, here comes Steve's, uh, Dick's father. Mm-hmm. Boom! Out, out the equipment goes. Oh. Steve ran into trouble, had to close down, and there went the recording studio. But later on, Dick Dale did this. Is that correctly, John? Yep. Miserloo? Miserloo. Awesome. That's awesome. And so that there went Dick Dale, and I, in my packet of things that you save, I think I have that record. Wow. Uh, not that one, uh, the one that we made, which I, I can't uh. remember the name of it, but it was on a gold, instead of black uh, vinyl, it was gold. With a white label, it was Cupid Records. That's the name, that old, good old Steve that uh, gave us uh, food at the pizza place. Wow. That was the guy that... Uh, you know, and that was, and we we also had a, a kid 
He looked just like Sal Mineo, just like him. And he was a singer. And yeah. he was one of the 15 people living at this house. And he was a mess. You know, he was a mess. But he did record a song called um, Something Love. And that was his last name was, uh, was Love. It wasn't Buddy Love, was it? No, no. <laughs> no, no, Sorry. it wasn't. I, I guess I rambled a bit, but that was my uh, Dick Dale story. And uh, he was a nice guy. And, Dude and, could play, and, man. Well, here's the thing about Dick Dale. A picture in the paper on Wednesday, July 6th, uh, has Dick Dale. He plays left-handed. Did you know that? Yeah. And uh, they, all the musicians and the bands that were back in those days didn't have any uh, insurance. Right. And all the record companies didn't take care of their people. No. And so now they're all on darn near life support. I mean, I mean, uh, he's got diabetes. He's got uh, kidney failure uh, and upper gastrointestinal. Did I? Miss How old is he now? Seventy-nine. Two years older than I am. So I'm doomed. No, you're not. Well, I got Medicare, so. Uh, but he continues to get in his car. He drives wherever he can get a job, and he performs. He's got lower hip pain, made climbing stairs difficult, so he has to have assistance to get on the stage. Uh, he's got a uh, colonoscopy bag. Ew. Yeah, he's uh, he's poor a guy. Yeah, 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 but he still rocks out. I mean, look at that yes. picture of him. Yeah. I so admire musicians, especially those that are in their 60s and 70s that formed the music that, that shaped us, and they're still out there rocking it. I, I abs they, they turn the concept of old age on its ear, and I absolutely love it. Have you ever seen Keith, uh, what's his name? Keith. Richards. Thanks. Keith. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm on mind support. I know. Uh, yes. I have a colonoscopy right here in my head. No. No. What? Don, what? you don't need Prevagen, you got me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You're now his memories. Yeah. How am I going to drink you? <laughs> well, that's another story. <laughs> it's what? A family show. Family show. Family anyway, show. well, uh, Keith Richards, have you seen his knuckles? I mean, I have a shot of him on somewhere. And you can see his knuckles are like marbles. And I don't know how he plays that guitar because he's got to have arthritis. He self-medicates, I believe. Well, I'm, I'm sure he's going to outlive all of us. Uh, that's what they're talking. I mean, yeah. the joke is that he'll outlive, you know, yeah. the other old folks. Yeah. Anyway, we wish uh, Dick Dale uh, some, and I'm, you may good see health. some pictures. We wish him good health. Of, of, of him uh, later on. Yeah. On our shoe. And, uh, and our very big shoe. And that's uh, probably part of the black, what, flashback Friday. It was, well, yeah. Well, black lives matter too. So yeah. does back things matter. You can, you can cut the crap out of that, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Flashback Friday on WWDB. Time now for Flashback Friday, where we go back, way back. And it's 17 minutes before the hour, so I'm not going to take a whole long time on this. I, uh, I had the opportunity to direct Bill Maher back in the day. Yes. This is before he got into the uh, talk Television. Was he a wry guy back then? A what? A wry guy. Was he very wry back then? W R Y. With a W. Yes, this is W R Y. Yes. Thank you. Oh, God. Well, I thought you were talking about the booze I'm for a second there. No, I didn't mean R Y E. Oh. I thought you meant me. Mm. <laughs> that, that voice was our dear uh, Ryan. Ryan, Silver. Our, our very own wry guy. Yes, it is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh, Bill Maher was trying to be an actor in television. We may have some clips and some pictures coming up on our televised okay. program, which will be on uh, Monday, right, right, John? Yes, sir. And uh, you'll see some pictures and maybe some stuff. Uh, uh, Bill was, he was good to direct. He, w he really was fun. And he and his partner, and I can't think of the guy's name, they played detectives. And uh, it was a, a situation comedy. And, but he was, he was amenable to try pretty much anything. And okay. then he would have an idea here and there, you know, whatever. And he was most uh, enjoyable to work with. Hmm. Now, later on... Who knew? Well, later on, I'm not in love with his uh, <clears throat> politics, but I enjoy his humor. Right. Yeah, and even though he is so far left, it's way past me, because um, I'm a centrist and, you know, independent. But he, he really rips into Mr. Trump and others. Right. And I find it funny. Right. So I like Bill Maher. Right. Um, I'm not going to, you know, probably hang out. He... he I doubt he would remember me. I mean, he. How could anybody forget you? Well, you know. Uh, 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 and also Raquel Welch. 
another one they don't make them like that anymore well <gasps> she, she was yeah yeah, yeah. And we have a couple of uh, pictures that remember about the things that hurt your heart mm -hmm. careful yes okay i was working the mork and mindy show as yes you were as an assistant director mm -hmm. and howard storm was a guy about this high. I mean, he was not very big, and he was an ex-fighter. I mean, mm -hmm. he was a he was a, one of those kind of guys that liked to box. Right. And what happened was, uh, you know, we would go down to uh, Olympic Gardens uh, to see some boxing matches because he got in the business of owning some new boxers. Okay. Like flyweights and you know, got, and we were hurrying to get done with our um, our episode that week. It was on a Thursday, mm -hmm. and so we all rushed out of there, jumped in our cars, went down to the Olympics. And, and he got in, he got a second row of seats, four or five of us were there, and we all just kind of sat around. Here comes his fighter out of the ring. As soon as we sat down, they were carrying his fighter out. I mean, he got popped in the first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that was the end of that. Okay. So we stayed around and split. But I think it took Howard out of the owning boxers okay. league. But you didn't mess with Howard. And it was a very funny guy because he also did stand up in his latter uh, career. Okay. Anyway, Raquel is standing there and the, we're doing a rehearsal, mm -hmm. second day into it. And she's looking at Howard and Howard is giving directions. There's nobody in the audience, nobody anywhere except our crew uh, standing around. And her husband was standing behind her uh, and moved. Yeah, he, and he moved behind Howard. Okay. Kind of. You know, moved around, and Howard said something to Raquel, and she looked over his shoulder to her husband, mm -hmm. and he was either going or really, and he was directing her past Howard. Well, that took about five seconds for Howard to find that out and threw him off the set because oh, he didn't care. He was tough, oh, and I learned God. a lot from Howard. Howard was the guy that uh, got me to direct uh, Mork and Mindy in the latter days. Wow. Um, you've got something coming up too, don't you? Time now for Lady Duda. From the producer's point of view. So, um, I was struggling when I first got here for our pre-production meeting because mm -hmm. I was a little having a hard time trying to find the funny because a lot of stuff that's happened this week hasn't been funny at all. And I have been, you know, socially networking with my very large group of friends that have been lifelong friends and seeing different points of view on what's been going on in this country and I kind of put something out there today and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. We know that two African American men lost their lives this week at the hands of officers, police officers, questionable circumstances to say the least and there was some outrage that centered around that. But we also know that somebody in retribution ambushed officers in Dallas last night um, shooting 11 or 12 of them and killing five. Some of them were shot in the back. Is it five? I thought it was four. Last night it was It's four. five. It was five A fifth now? one succumbed uh, to injuries. All right. So, and then you're on your social media things and you're seeing some people blowing up about the two African-American gentlemen that lost their lives and then you see other people that are blowing up about the police officers that have lost their lives and everybody's choosing sides and everybody's pointing fingers and everybody's saying, if you don't agree with me, you're part of the problem and it just goes on and on and on and on as we allow ourselves to be whipped up into a frenzy about this, to hate each other, to be angry with each other, to keep the fires burning in a way that's not productive for any of us. And lost in all of this <clears throat> are the people that are being killed every weekend in, a, in what I can only s say is genocide within the African-American community. And nobody's making a big deal out of this. It's not sexy enough for it to be in the news. It's not prime time stuff anymore. If it's, if it's black on white violence, it's not really covered too much. If it's white on black violence, it's blown out of proportion. But if it's black on black violence, people don't seem to really want to take notice of it. They don't want to talk about it. The Black Lives Matter people don't want to talk about it. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, Barack Obama, Loretta Lynch, they don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. And it's happening in this weekend alone, you guys, in Chicago. 64 people were shot. Four of those people died in the inner city, and nobody's talking about it. And that hurts me as a human being. It hurts me a lot. So basically what I want to say to all of you out there that are listening, that are watching, is this. Stop the hate. 
Stop the hate. We are not different races. We are one race. We are the human race. We need to stop letting people yank our chains. We have to stop letting the echo chamber get us so head up on things that we're willing to go out and be violent towards each other. We need to reach out to the people within our sphere of, of our community, within our circle of friends that may have a different ethnic background than we do or religious or political background. And we need to sit down and have a conversation. And we need to have two ears and one mouth. Listen twice, speak once. We need to be open to others' points of view. We need to talk as a community about how we're going to heal these wounds, and we need to stop promoting the hate. Stop the hate, everybody. It's time. That's what I have to say. Well said. That's what I have to say. It was well a whole said. lot longer, but in a nutshell, well, every life matters. You, every life matters. You got that right. Okay. Now, that could take us into other areas. You know that. That's fine. I don't think we have the time to go Not into today, it today. Not today, we don't. Not today. It's uh, 10 minutes before the top of the hour. It is. I'm Don Lewis Barnard. This is uh, Judah McLean. Um, and it's time to get out of here in the sense of where are we going? Well, we're going to go home. We're going to have some lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be back next Friday. Uh, I have some books to, to uh, promote. Mm -hmm. It's Hump Book Day. What? Well, I'm just humping my books. People do it all the time. You go to, you, know, you watch O'Brien or Ryan or, or, or what's his name? O'Reilly. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. You talk, yeah, I mean, he, he, he publishes his books all the time. Yes, he does. And I've just got uh, minor little things. Okay. So anyway, uh, go to uh, my website and you can get them signed. Mm -hmm. uh, full price, by the way. But if you go to uh, Amazon or Kindle, you'll get a, a huge discount. Mm -hmm. Oh. My little plug here is uh, Media Guilds International, the Vegas voice actors. I happen to be a member of that group, and they broadcast from this fine studio every other Monday, and they have a program that is filled with comedy sketches, merriment, mirth, hilarity, improv, everything. Everything you can think of, they do. Our founder, Betty Lugaris, our guiding light, keeps us in check and helps us do better every week. She's lovely. She's so a hoot, too. Tune in every other Monday right here on WWDB, Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corp.com, <laughs> and see the Vegas voice actors with Media Guilds International. Also, our very favorite charity, Forgotten Friends. Love those folks out in Pahrump, No Kill Shelter, Petco, National Adoption Event this weekend, tomorrow from noon until 4 at the Blue Diamond and Valley View Petco location go and find and adopt the new love of your life i don't think i could do that personally why because jack would kick somebody's butt and i don't think it would be the new entrance into our home i could just see that beautiful poodle of yours looking over his shoulder or down his aristocratic snout with disdain like really well i've got a big you snout brought that too. mutt home well i got a snout see hey, well there you go i don't think jack would like it so if you can and if you're in the market don't shop adopt please that's a good line there you go and then for comments and commercial information we would like you to email us at don lewis at gmail.com with your comments about the wait, show wait wait yeah commercial info for commercial if you want to sponsor the oh. show if you want to buy ad time mm. so contact us at don lewis at gmail.com with your comments where you're listening from and or if you would like to buy a piece of the show. Never say buy a piece to a man in my condition. In your condition. I keep telling you that. I and know you won't that. Listen. I know that. All right. Uh, listen, are you done? Yes, I oh, am. Oh, okay. I am now. Uh, the, uh, um, we, we archive our shows, our radio shows, so that you can either hear it live, mm -hmm. and we kind of like uh, talk about being live here in Las Vegas, which right. is kind of fun. But we realize you're not going to sit home and uh, being in Berlin or someplace around the world and tuning this in our time, right. whatever, so you can archive. But the TV shows, uh, we're on YouTube and we're on our own, WWDB. Go to that and you can archive and watch and listen to your play. Right. Okay. Um, if you have any likes, uh, you are more than welcome to tell us what you think. And you can... Uh, um, Follow us on Facebook. Yeah, and there's a graphic there to tell you how to do Follow it. Follow us on Facebook, folks. Like I have us on a Facebook. Verbal meme. And I always like to say meme. I know that. Because I'm an idiot, and I don't care about that. I know that. I don't care that. Um, Not that you're an idiot, but that you don't care about that. <laughs> the best classroom in the world is at the feet of an elderly person. This is true. So, y'all have yourself 
A kick-ass day, everybody. Y'all have have yourself yourself a kick-ass day, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Thank you.